It's no point in inquiring of the Lord if you don't do what he says. You're wasting your time and his. No point in God laying out for you what he wants you to do and you saying, nah, that's okay. No point in doing that. It always ends in disaster. Just ask Adam and Eve. Anytime you and I make a decision that is independent from God as opposed to dependent on God, it always ends in destruction. It always ends in death. It always ends in disappointment. It's always the tree of the knowledge of good and evil versus the tree of life. That's the, that literally is the narrative of Scripture. That's the narrative of God and choice. He's always saying, choose, choose, choose but choose me. Choose, choose, but choose life. Choose, choose, but choose righteousness. Choose, choose, but, but, but choose peace. Choose love. Choose it because it's all in me. And so he says, now in this, I need you to settle yourself. I need you to not be afraid. I don't need you to be discouraged. Go out, face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Retire your fear because there's praise. In the prophecy. It's praise. The praise is in the prophecy because the prophecy comes from a praiser. It's embedded in there. And you might not see it at first, but when you connect those dots, there's a reason why they let you know this is one of Asaph's boys. Asaph? Oh, King David's chief praise road dog. I remember him. Yeah. That Asaph, he's the one that's speaking to you today when he says the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And look at the response in verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some of the Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Now, I'm telling you that there is nothing wrong. Come on, somebody. Nothing wrong with praising God with a loud voice. It's right there. It's nothing wrong with praising God with just a hand. Could even be a finger. It could just be, it could be a praise hug. It could be a praise walk around. It could be silent. But I'm telling you, don't underestimate the importance of being able to freely get your praise on and get into a praise zone. Amen. A praise zone where you're like David, when you literally, according to second second, when you've danced out of your clothes and then your wife says to you how undignified the king of Israel was today. And he says to her five of the beautiful words in scriptures, but it was before the Lord. It was before the Lord. Excuse me. It was before the Lord. He's like, I'll get more undignified than this if I have to. Because it's before the Lord. Don't, 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 don't judge what I'm doing when I'm praising. Don't judge when I'm coming in. If I happen to fall out of my clothes, that's, that's, what you ha- that's why you had those, those, those older ladies in, in, in churches like that that are able to give you that garment to cover up with. Amen. That's why when you, when you have people, she getting into the zone or he's getting into the zone, you get those people that say, let, let, let me surround. I'm, I'm going to let you praise, but I just want to make sure you don't fall over and, 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 and knock, knock your head. Don't, don't, don't do that. Oh, wait a minute. Let's move back. When the praise dancers are in the, it, don't, don't sit, don't sit in this. Don't sit in this area here. Don't, don't sit here, 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 or here. You know why you in the praise zone. You might get hit in the head with a flag. And don't, don't blame us. As a matter of fact, I, I think I'm going to start to, when we get back into the sanctuary and we get our praise on, I think it's going to be at a different level when we get in the sanctuary. I might have to have you sign a release if you're going to sit in these seats. This is the praise zone. We're not responsible for what happens in the praise zone. It was before the Lord. And they stood up and praised the Lord with a very loud voice. There's something about screaming and shouting praise to the God of heaven, amen, that God appreciates and desires. Early in the morning, though, it says that they left for the desert of Tekoa and they set out. And so here's the third thing that you have to do. It's not just that you inquire the Lord. 
It's not just that you retire your fear. You've got to acquire some faith. Amen. You've got to acquire some faith. And when I'm talking about acquiring faith, I'm not talking about salvation faith. Amen. I'm not talking about that kind of faith. I'm talking not about boat faith. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about walking on water faith. Amen. I'm not talking about being in the boat where the other disciples were. They were faithful. Amen. And, and when Jesus came walking on the water, but there was only one that came out to him. And Peter said, if, if, if that be you, Lord, bid me come. I'm talking about the faith that moves. I'm talking about the faith that, that is a faith of, of action. I'm talking about the faith that builds upon the faith that you've already expressed. And you say, I'm going to, in this moment, trust you like I've never trusted you before. Amen. I'm going to walk out on the water. And if that be you, Lord, bid me come. If that's what you want me to do, I'm going to walk on faith. You want me to take a different military strategy that doesn't make any sense? I'm going to hearken all the way back to Jericho. I'm I'm going to hearken all the way back to Joshua chapter 6 when it didn't make any sense to walk around that, that those walls for six days and not say, say anything. And then on the seventh day, you said, I'll shout and the walls will come tumbling down. That doesn't make any sense. But the lesson there in Joshua chapter 6 is you better listen and believe and you better trust and obey. God says, listen, believe. And your response is supposed to be, I trust. And I obey. Even if it doesn't make any sense. Early in the morning, they left for the desert. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and people of Israel. Have faith. Come on, somebody. Acquire some faith. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets. Have faith in what Jehaziel just told you. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. So after consulting with the people, here's what the king, a military, a military man with people's lives under his charge, says, here's what we're going to do. Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army my god that does not sound like good military strategy and if you were if jehoshaphat was here he would tell you it's not good military strategy but it's what god told me to do do you know in judges chapter one and in judges chapter 20 when they're trying to decide what tribe will go up so who will go up first for us send judah first In Numbers chapter 2, when they, when, they, when they give everybody the positions around how they're supposed to march out when they, when, when they move, when they pack up the temple, when they pack up the people, there were three tribes um, in, in, on each side, three, 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 and three for all, for all 12, and the Levites were in the middle. And they had three tribes, and then the most prominent tribe in every group got to be named as part of that clan. And so in Numbers chapter 2, it talks about the, those three together, but it was Judah was the most prominent. And guess who went first? Judah went first. When Leah had Judah, he was her fourth son. Genesis talks about the fact in Genesis, I want to say it's Genesis 26. Uh-oh. Did I wait too long? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Good grief. It's, 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 uh, I can't, I can't find it right now, <laughs> but, but, but she, she's talking, I think it's, I want to say it's in Genesis 29. It is, it's in Genesis 29. And, um, it says when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he opened up her womb and for everyone, she gave a name to her son her sons and her first son that she that she had his name was uh, Reuben and she said I'm gonna name him Reuben it's because the Lord has seen my misery she conceived again had a second son named him Simeon Simeon means because the Lord heard that I am not loved he gave me this one too conceived the third son his name was Levi she said because I'm gonna name him Levi because maybe now my husband will be attached to me and then the scripture says she conceived again. And when she had given birth to a son, she said, this time I will praise the Lord. 
So she named him Judah. This time, these other three, they've been about me. They've been about my hurt. They've been about, they've been about my pain. It's been about what's happening between me and my husband. And I'm wondering if he loves me. And I wonder if he's going to be attached to me. But this fourth one, this one, this time, I will praise the Lord. 